So I think I've got the window, me showing up right now for you guys. All right, I think I've got it all set up. Okay, so today uh, I'm going over even and odd functions. So if you have watched my video on symmetry of functions, you are already ahead of the game because even and odd is very related to whether functions are symmetric in different ways. And so we're going to be using like the same tests that we did for symmetry to determine whether functions are even and odd or even or odd. They're one or the other or neither, but they can't be both. So just to review of functions. So a function is a specific type of relationship where every input has only one output value. So we've been dealing with a whole bunch of different kinds of equations and a function is a specific type and the most useful type. So most of what we deal with are functions. When we have functions, we use special notation. So instead of using y, we use f of x, which is the f parenthesis x close parenthesis. And that just f is usually standard for function of x. It's just the f is the name of the function. So you can give it any letter that you want there. And then the x is what your input is. And it's just telling you what your input variable is. It's not multiplication. And most of the time when we're doing things with functions, we're only doing things on the right side of the function. We don't really touch the f of the x part. We might replace the x with a number, or we might replace the entire f of x with a number, but we don't do any multiplying or dividing usually on the left side. Mostly what we do is evaluate where we're plugging something in for x, and then we're just doing stuff on the right side. And that's what we do when we are um, checking for odd and even functions, as we're basically just doing things on one side of the function and ignoring the other side. So functions are, they, there's a lot of things about functions that we want to know, characteristics that give us information about the graph and the type of equation that we have. And so we're going to be looking at a lot of them this week and next week. So it's, it's next week, we're going to be focusing on polynomial functions, but we're kind of getting into the basics of functions here. And so we're going to be talking about a lot of these things. So we've got the basic form, which is what the equation looks like. And we have what are different parent functions that are different basic types of the equation, whether it has an absolute value or it has an exponent of two or whether it has a square root. So um, that kind of helps categorize the type of function. We have the shape that it makes when it graphs. We have transformations, which is basically how that shape is moved around on the graph, whether it's moved to the left or the right, or if it's stretched out and that sort of thing. We have symmetry, which is how symmetric the graph is and various aspects. We've got even and odd functions or neither. We've got end behavior, which is what happens at the end points, the left and the right, when you kind of zoom out a lot. Uh, there's zeros of functions that we're very interested in. That's very common. Um, intercepts, the X and Y intercepts, and then these things called asymptotes that you'll learn about later. So there's all these different things that we're interested in about functions, and they tell us different things about the equation that we have. And they give us important information to be used in various settings. Symmetry and even odd functions are useful for a lot of image stuff. So if you are doing math, um, you know, or any kind of engineering, and you've got stuff with images, you know, you want to know, are things symmetric? Sometimes you do transformations to images. So these various characteristics come in handy based on different applications of what you're looking at. And so we're, you know, teaching all of these characteristics. And then it depends on where you're going with the math on what parts are most useful for you. Um, so I know for sure symmetry and even and odd does pop up in circuitry. And ET310, there are some questions that um, you have to know whether the function you have is even or odd and those rules. So specifically what I'm covering today, if you are going on that path, that is something that you just kind of keep in your back pocket because you will need it later on. So even 
odd neither. So this, like I said, this is very related to symmetry. So if you have a, a function and you graph it, there are three different types of symmetry. It's symmetric across the y-axis, which is the horizontal. So it's a mirror image. When we say symmetric, we mean mirror image. So it's a mirror image across the x of the horizontal, or it could be a mirror image across the y or the vertical, or it can form sort of a sort of a mirror image, not quite a mirror image, but it's still called symmetry across the line y equals x, which is sort of at a slant. So there are three types of symmetry that we are interested in with functions. And these are related to even or odd. If you are symmetric with respect to y, which means it's a mirror image vertically, it is also called an even function. If you are symmetric across what they call the origin or the line y equals x, that is an odd function. And then if you're symmetric across the horizontal, that's not even nor odd. Um, it doesn't have a name. And technically, if things are symmetric across the, um, the x-axis, they're not, they, they may not be functions because they violate the, um, the vertical line test. It depends on what the function looks like on whether it is a function or not. And then if it has no symmetry at all, well, it's not going to be even nor odd. So that's just neither. Now I have these test conditions here and I've written them in function notation. And if you're comparing this to the book, um, specifically for the even and the odd, the way the book writes the test conditions is slightly different, but it is the same thing. Like um, they have, so what's different is for even, they put f of negative x equals f of x. So they just reverse the order, which one's on each side of the equal sign, which is minor. Um, for the, the test condition for odd, they have the negative with the f of x. And it's equivalent to what I have here. If you multiply both sides by negative, it just flips what side it's on. I put it this way so that the left side is always compared against our original function because I find that's the easiest way to determine whether something is even or odd, is if you're always comparing against the original function. And that's not the method that the textbook does, but I, I think that's personally the easiest. So that's why I have it written here. It's equivalent, just note that if you are comparing to the textbook or even some videos, you may see them do it slightly different, but you'll get the same answer. So. We are going to be focusing just on even and odd. And then if it's not even or if it's not odd, then the answer is automatically neither. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. So before we start getting into all of the, the actual math that we're doing this, there are some kind of shortcuts that you can use so that you can look at the equation and say, okay, this is probably gonna be even, or this is probably gonna be odd. And that will be very helpful if you're taking a quiz, which is timed and you're running out of time, because then you can say, well, okay, maybe I don't have time to do all the math here, but based off of what I see, it's probably gonna be one of these. So just kind of shortcuts, these aren't guarantees, but um, they do kind of help. So, if you have a function and all of the exponents of the variables are even numbers or you have absolute values. So just an example of this is if I have a function like it's x squared plus x to the fourth, all of those exponents are even. So the function is likely gonna be an even function. Or you may have a function where you have an absolute value in there. That's likely gonna be even. So this can kind of help you test. So if you think, okay, this is likely going to be an even function, let me test the even first before I test the odd. Saves some time. Um, if the exponents of all the variables are odd numbers, so like I had x cubed plus x, then the function is likely odd. So if you see an equation like that, maybe skip testing whether it's even and only test to see if it's an odd function because a function cannot be both. 
it's either going to be even or odd or neither. It won't be both. So if you think it's going to be odd, test for odd first and save yourself some time. If you have a mixture of exponents, like you have x squared plus x, so we've got an even exponent with the x squared, and then the x would be an odd exponent because that would be one, it's likely neither. And then if you have a constant in there, so let's say we have f of x goes to absolute value x plus two. Likely, now not all the time, but you know, throwing that constant in there often messes things up and to make it neither. But these are not guarantees. That's why I say likely. But you know, if you think it's going to be neither, you should check both even and odd first. And you can always check by graphing. Some of these are easier to see by graphing than not. But these are just some shortcuts to kind of help you look at the equation, kind of determine, well, which one do I think is this you know, going to be? Now, what we're going to be doing, and let me go back to this table here. So the test conditions, notice the right side of the test conditions for even or odd, you're plugging in negative x. So what this means is that we are going to be taking everywhere we see x and replacing it with negative x and then trying to simplify. And this gets confusing for people because they're like, well, it's not a number. How do I simplify negative x in here? So I made a table or made a little chart here to kind of help you out. If you have a negative inside an even exponent, the negative disappears. So if you have a negative x to an even exponent, it will just become x to the even exponent. And likely that's going to tell you your function's even. If you have a negative x to an odd, that what happens is that the negative basically pulls out and you're likely to have an odd function. Absolute value of a negative is a positive. So actually, technically, I still need to write the absolute. Oops, I actually turned off my pen. That should still have absolute values there. So if you plug in a negative x and you have absolute values, that's going to simplify to just the absolute value of x because the negative take the absolute value becomes positive, so it disappears. So that's going to show that you likely have an even function. And there are some cases where you have even or odd exponents on something that has a number added to it. So when you do that, if you're replacing x with a negative x, you end up with like negative x plus two or something, and then that whole thing has an exponent. Um, I didn't show all of the math here, but what happens when you simplify those is that the signs change um, that it, they're equivalent. So a negative x plus a is the same as x minus a when it has an even exponent. But when it has an odd exponent, what happens is a negative pops out in front and then it's x minus a. And those generally will pop up that you're probably gonna have something that's neither even nor odd. But again, these are just, it's likely that way it's not guaranteed. It depends on what the equation itself looks like, but these are just kind of some tips to help you as you go through this so that you have an idea of what you're looking for and you know what you should try, whether, oh, let me see if this is even first versus odd. So I'm gonna refer back to these once we start doing all of the math, <laughs> don't worry. So we're gonna just, start with graphically determining whether something is an even function or an odd function, because these are connected to symmetry. So even functions form a mirror image across the vertical axis. So that's why I have that red line there. So if you have a graph and you're checking whether something is an even function, you're looking at that graph and you're saying, is there a mirror image on the left and the right side of the graph. Like, does that line that I drew in there on the vertical axis, is that forming a mirror image? Is there a reflection? So, you know, if you look at what we have here, there is no reflection from the left or the right here. It's not forming a mirror image on either side of this red line. So that means this is not an even function.
And another way to check is to ask yourself, let's say you pick a point, um, usually pick a, an X, Y, I usually pick something in the positive. So I've got this ordered pair, four comma one. If something is even, then you'll have the same point on the graph, but with a negative X value. So that would mean that negative four one is also on the graph. But you can see negative four one is not one of our, it's not on the graph that we have there. It's not hitting the blue. So that means it's not even. So that's another way to check is to pick one point on one side of the graph, change the X value, see if you hit a point on the other side. And if you don't, it's not even. Are there any questions on the, the, the even part here, checking whether this is even? Okay, so <laughs> you're gonna rewatch all of this, okay. <laughs> You know, it is, you know, it's one of those things. I know that this is a hard topic. It's one of those where you almost need to go through it and then go through it a second time. So I get it. <laughs> this is one that even for me, it's like I've had to think through it multiple times until I finally get it. So we've determined this is, this graph is not even. So I have the same exact graph. I just copied it so we can check the odd. So odd functions are symmetric with respect to the origin or kind of along the y equals x. And what this means is that it, it's reflected both across the x and the y. And it's very hard to see visually. Checking whether something is respect, respective against the origin or an odd function is very hard visually. And so the way that I do it is again, I pick a point up in quadrant one. So I'll pick that same for one point. And if something is odd, then the same point, but with negative X and negative Y will also be on the graph. So negative four and negative one will also be on the graph. So if both of those are on the graph, then that means that this is an odd function. It's always good to check more than one point. So I, I don't know if this is gonna help at all, but I kind of draw a line between these to say, okay, they've kind of forming a line, you know, a nice line going through the origin. Think, so odd has origin symmetry. So if you connect these, the line goes through the origin. That might be helpful for you. Um, let's look at this one here, two comma negative two. So if I change the signs on the X and the Y, so this is two, negative two, then negative two, two should be on the graph because I'm changing the X and changing the Y. So that is on my graph. And again, I connect those, it goes through the origin. So if I have one comma two right here, then negative one and negative two should be on the graph. And you see that is on the graph. So to check whether something is odd, you pick a point that you see on your graph part, change the sign on the X and Y, see if that's on the graph point. And then you're basically kind of, you know, when you draw that line through them, they're going to go through the origin. Hence, origin symmetry. Hence, this is an odd function. So this is yes, an odd function, because for every point that I picked on one side of, you want to pick something on one side of the red line that I have there. And then it should be reflected to the other side of the red line through an opposite of the X and opposite of the Y. And then when you connect those two points, they should go through the origin to be origin symmetry. So that's, this is origin symmetry is a, you wanna connect it back to whether something is symmetric or not. 
So checking odd is something that is very hard to do visually. I, I mean, you can if you know what you're looking for, but I always have to pick a point and then go through this process for me to check whether it's an odd function or not. It's not like the even function where I can see instantly whether it's a mirror image. Checking odd is a bit harder. Okay. So different graph here, where again, we're gonna check whether this function is even or if it's odd. So again, if you're looking at even, you're looking, is this a mirror image across that vertical red line that I've drawn? the x-axis. And so is one point on the right going to be on the left with just at the same y value different x? So I could even pick something on the left here. So I have, oops, it's white. It would help if I actually picked a color. So like negative 2, 1, if it's a mirror image, then 2, 1 should also be on the graph. But you can see it's not because I hit an empty spot. I didn't actually hit something that's graphed there. So this is also not even. So then we need to check, is this odd? So I'm going to pick a point. Uh, let's say I pick this one right here. This is negative 2, 3. So I want to go to positive two and then negative three to see if that's on the graph. So I'm changing my X value and my Y value to get my next point, see if that's on there. And that's on there. That's good. We can see that. And again, if I draw a line through these, they're going to go through the origin. So let's pick a different point here. I have negative three, one. So I want to go to positive three, one and then positive three, negative one, because I'm switching both the X and the Y signs. I have really bad circles here, but <laughs> it is right there on there. So again, if I connect those, they're going through the origin. So this graph is also odd, just like the previous example that we had. So this is, oops, I was about to write even. This is an odd function. So the way I kind of think about it is I pick a point, I kind of, okay, let's change the sign of the X, see where that would be, then change the sign of the Y, and then that's where I draw my next dot, and then I connect them. See, do they go through the origin? Okay, so here's another graph. The points, yeah, the points need to be on the blue part. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's the key. When I say it's on the graph, I mean it's on the, the blue part, the actual shape that we have going on there. Because, yes, they're on the background of the graph. I mean, I have a <laughs> two-dimensional graph here, but they, we want it specifically to be on the part that is representing the function, which in this case is the blue part. So if it doesn't land on one of those blue parts, then that fails this test. Yes, and that explains the not even, because while it's on the blue part on one of them, it's not on the blue part when I did the reflection. So here I've got a different type of graph. And so let me make sure I'm in my purple, not my white. <laughs> if I draw a point here, and then I do a mirror image. So one, two, negative one, two is also on there. And you can see now I am hitting both parts. And I can even pick something here to negative one. And when I reflect it to negative two, negative one is also on the graph. So these, this is even because now we do have an even you know, it does, it is a mirror image and you can see, this is a lot easier to see visually. You can check even very easily because you can see that vertical line and you can see, oh, it's a mirror image on either side. Like that's something humans can see, you know? So because this one, it's even, this means it's automatically not an odd function. Now, generally that means, okay, you know, if it's, if it's even, it's not odd. 
but I'm going to show you and prove to you why it's not odd using the same method that we did before, just so you can kind of verify. So let's say I pick a point over here, two, negative two. In order to be an odd function, so this is two, negative two, in order to be odd, negative two, two should also be on the graph. but negative two, two is not, that is not on the blue part. So while I connect these, you know, it does go through the origin, but it's not on our graph at all. So this is not an odd function because we're hitting something that's not even on our blue part of the graph. And I can, you know, pick here one comma two, to be symmetric or to be an odd function, that means negative one, negative two is on the graph. But again, when I try to do that, it's not on the graph. Oops, and my other thing disappeared. Like it's not, so when you connect these, yes, they go through the origin roughly, but we don't hit a blue, something on the blue. And so because we didn't hit our blue pot, part, it's not on our graph, so this is not an odd function. You know, you could be like, well, I can get close, you know. Okay, well, what, you know, if you're like, oh, well, maybe if I click here, you know, it's close, but then it doesn't go through the origin anymore. And that's the other part is like, if you draw those lines, it doesn't go through the origin. So if you even try to kind of pick a point that would make it look like it's odd, it doesn't work because it doesn't go through that origin. So this is not an odd function. This is an even function. So now we're going to get into where we're working with just the equations, because this is mostly what you're going to be doing. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're going into the engineering and the electronic stuff, you do have to deal with even or odd functions. Most of those are trig functions like sine, cosine, all of that kind of stuff, which actually are looking like these things. So if you're going into engineering, you're going to see things like this. These are trig functions. They're, they can be even, they can be odd. Um, but in general algebra, we're not doing trig. So we're just looking at other types of functions. So we've got our function here, m of x equals negative four x to the fifth plus two x cubed plus x. So let me just reiterate the rules here for whether something is even, odd, or neither. So if we go back to the chart that I have, if we are testing if something is even, f of x equals f of negative x. If we are testing whether something is odd, f of x equals negative f of negative x. So I'm gonna write these down. We're checking f of x equals f of negative x here, and f of x equals negative f of x. So those are the checks. We already have, in this case, it's not f, we're using m. So we could just change our letter to M. We're, we've already got M and we need to plug in a negative for X and then see, oops, I should have a negative right there. See which one of these categories it falls into. So before we do this, let's look at our equation. We're going to try to use those little shortcuts that I had to determine, okay, is this likely going to be even or is this likely going to be odd? So let me go back to our shortcut list. So we're looking at, are all of the variables even? Are all the variables odd to have a combination of both of those? So if all the variables are even, it's likely even. If all the variables are odd, it's likely odd. Otherwise, it's probably going to be neither. What we have here 
is all of our exponents on these variables are odd. So this is likely an odd function because these are all odd numbers. I've got a five, a three, and then that would be a one up there. So those are all odd exponents, which tells us that this is likely an odd function. So if I think it's going to be odd, let's check to see if it's odd and skip checking for even. Although really to check for odd, you're checking for even along the way. So the, the step to check out is like one extra step from checking even. So notice for both of these, we need to find M of negative X. And then if it's equal to your original function, it's even. If it's not, you multiply it by negative one and then see if it's equal to the original function. So we need to find M of negative X. And so what that means is everywhere I see X, I'm replacing it with negative X. So I have negative four and then times negative X to the fifth plus two times negative X to the third. And then that's plus X. So that comes and turns into a negative X. So that is your first step is to replace x with negative x. And when you do that, you need to put parentheses around it because of the negative. You want to make sure that you've got your exponents on the right part, that you're not accidentally thinking it's subtraction. So that's why you want to make sure you've got parentheses around all those. So now we need to simplify the right side. So I said at the very beginning, when we have functions, we generally never touch the left other than plug, plug something in. So we're not going to be touching the left anymore. We're just going to be simplifying the right side. So this is where I'm going to go to my other chart that I had or my other notes here. So when we plug in negative X and we're looking at right here, if we have an odd exponent, it simplifies so that you can basically ignore those parentheses and it's just a negative on the outside. That's sort of how it, how it simplifies. So that's what we're looking at is we've got these odd exponents. So we're going to just pull out the negative essentially. So that gives me a negative four. And then that negative X to the fifth simplifies to negative X to the fifth, just without the parentheses where they were. So it's just like you're, you're just kind of moving where that exponent ends up because of the way that it simplifies. And then plus a negative X, well, that's just minus X. So now I've got a negative four times a negative. So this is gonna give me a positive four X to the fifth. And then I have a plus two times a negative. So it's gonna be a minus two X to the third and then a minus X. So we have just simplified M of negative X. And so now you're, you're comparing. So when you check to see if it's even, you're looking at this answer that we got, this simplified part. So you're looking at this, and then you're saying, is this the same as what we started with? So that's this rule right here. Is this the same thing as this function that I started with? So if you're looking at it, you're like, no, because all the signs are messed up. Yes, we got the same numbers. We got the same variables there with the same exponents, but the signs are all backwards. So that means it's not an even function because we didn't get out what we started with. We have something different here. So then, okay, the step to check to see if it's odd, the rule for odd here, is that we've got this negative in front. So if I pull out, if I multiply what I have here by a negative, is this going to give me back to the original function? That's, that's what this is when we're checking to see if it's odd. So you're just doing negative times M of negative X 
So you're just multiplying what you just did by a negative. And what that does is it changes all the signs. So when you distribute that negative, it's just everything's going to flip. And then you're saying, okay, is that the same thing we started with? So we got, when you multiply everything by a negative, you get four X to the fifth plus two X cubed plus X. And that is, oops, I missed a negative here. I was like, <laughs> forgot, I changed my signs. I forgot negative four. That's gonna give me a negative four up there. Uh, negative four X to the fifth plus two X to the cubed plus X. So we go back and we, that we see that's the same thing we started with. That is equal to M of X. So because when we did this, we first, we plug in a negative X and then we multiply it by negative and we get back to the original we started with. That's what tells you it's an odd function. So just like our little shortcut said, if you've got these odd exponents, it's likely to be odd. The math backs it up. Because when we follow this rule to check it, we got back to the original. Yes, Jamie, go ahead, ask your question. Did, when you started doing the new equation or the negative M times the negative X, did you use the equation that we just started with or that we ended with? Or did yes. you? Yes, yeah, so okay. yeah, we're using the one in yellow. Okay. Yeah, so you take whatever you just did and okay. then you're multiplying that by negative. Okay, and so yes, all right, I get it. That's why you said that you have to do this either way to find out the odd. Exactly, because you have to basically check the even on the way to the odd. Okay. Um, I mean, there's ways around it um, because the way that the book does it is they put the negative in front of the original function. And so like the book has you do what we did in yellow and then the book has you take the original function and multiply it by a negative and check, which I think is actually more work because <laughs> it's like if we already did the yellow, multiplying that by a negative is a lot easier than multiplying the other function by a negative because then you've got something else going on. I started plugging in numbers. This is easier. <laughs> yeah, I, you could, ugh, I mean, I, I do know some people that have done it by plugging in numbers, but then you have to actually do all the exponents on it. Yeah. So if you plug in a negative one, that's probably the easiest, but then you still have to do the math and determine, did I get the same thing out or the opposite? Here, you don't actually really need to do any like yeah. arithmetic. You don't have to multiply. You don't have to add. You just have to know the rules about where your negatives go. And that can be hard for a lot of people because I know negatives are difficult and it looks confusing because you're all, you've got all these variables, but you, you don't actually have to do any actual like multiplying or math, you know? Mm. You just have to know where your negatives are going and what you're comparing to. If I solved for M of five um, unnecessarily. Yeah, so you're <laughs> doing extra work. <laughs> um, other questions? So here's a new one. This one is F. Like I said, the, the whatever the letter is in front of the F of X part doesn't matter. It's just the name of it. So here we've got our exponents and both exponents are even. So this is likely going to be an even function because all of the exponents on the variables are even. So I'm just gonna put that here. But we do need to check just in case, especially if you had this with a constant added on, that constant usually messes things up and then makes it neither. <laughs> Not all the time, but it often does. So uh, you gotta always watch out for that because that constant, that sign is never changing because it doesn't have a, an X to multiply by. So it always messes things up. 
So once again, just writing down, if something is even, in this case it is X, then when I plug in that negative for X, I'm gonna get back to the original function. But if it's odd, when I plug in that negative, I need to then multiply that by negative in order to get back to the original function. So we're going to do the same thing that we did before where we're gonna plug in that negative for X. So I have three and then in parentheses is a negative X, then close the parentheses to the sixth and then plus two, then negative X in parentheses and then that is squared. So with even exponents, when you have a negative and you have an even exponent, the negative disappears. And you'll notice that just with numbers, a negative two times a negative two is a positive four. If you have an even number of negative signs and you've got things multiplied, it cancels out. If you have an odd number, the negative stays, which is why on this one, our negative stayed there when we tried to simplify there because you have like an extra negative that doesn't can't can out. So if we go back to just my, my tips here, and this is, you know, you might want to print this out or write this in your notes. You know, when I send out the PowerPoint, we are now looking at things that look like this. And so if you've got some negative to an even exponent, that negative is going to disappear when you simplify it. So here, all of these negatives that we're taking to these even exponents, six and two, they're gonna cancel out. And so when we simplify this, I have just get three X to the sixth plus two X squared. And that's the same thing we started with. That is our f of x function. So that is the rule for checking whether something is even, is if you plug in a negative and you get the same thing out that you started with, that rule right here, and that's what we did, this tells us that this function is even. So I don't even need to check whether it's odd, because if it's even, it's automatically not odd. So if you get it that it's even, it's actually, it's not as much work because you're done already and you don't have to go the extra step. So here we've got the letter P. And so we've got an absolute value, which generally, if you have something with an absolute value that usually indicates you're gonna be even. Uh, we've got an even exponent of 10 that generally indicates that we're gonna be even. But the fact that we have that plus five, if you've got some constant added on, that usually messes things up. And so this is likely going to end up being neither even nor odd because of that plus five. And so that, that constant just tends to mess things up. So even though the other two things I mean it's probably even, that plus five kind of trumps everything. And so we're going to likely find that both of these rules are going to fail, but we do want to check because it depends. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's just kind of a guideline here. So just rewriting up oh, and now it's, I just want to write these with the actual letters that we have. So we're looking for P of X. Is that going to be the same of P of negative X? That would mean it's even. Or do I need to multiply that by a negative to get it to be the same, which would mean that it's odd. And I forgot my negative sign there. Very careful if you're like me and you're forgetting to write your negatives. <laughs> so I'm gonna just start with, we're gonna plug in a negative X. That's always the first step. So I've got a negative and then the absolute value, negative X and then a plus 12. And then I've got this X, which is now gonna be a negative X to the 10 and then the plus five. 
So let's see what happens. So with our absolute value, any negatives inside the absolute value disappear because absolute values make things positive. The negative is still outside the absolute value because they don't multiply through. So an absolute value of a negative X is the same as the absolute value of X. Next, we have that 12, and then we have the negative X to the 10. So that even exponent on the negative X means that negative cancels out. So that's gonna become a positive X to the 10. And then we have our plus five. So here, even though I said that plus five usually messes things up, if you look at it, we are actually back to our original function. We have a negative absolute value of X plus a 12 X to the 10 and then a plus five. So we did end up back to the original. And that means that this is also even. So that's why I say that it's likely neither because there are cases where it doesn't mess it up. It sort of depends on all the other things in the, the, uh, the function where you have that constant. So most of the time when you have that constant and there are other things going on, it does tend to mess things up, but it depends on the combination of other things going on in the function. And that's why you need to check. And in this case, we thought I, I thought it was going to be neither just from past experience, but it's no guarantee. And this does end up being even because it ended up not mattering in this case. Okay. Now, most of the things where you're gonna be checking whether it's even or odd or neither are going to be looking sort of like this where you've got like exponents, maybe occasionally absolute values, but they're mostly gonna be dealing with exponents or on the quiz where you've got questions like this, they're giving you a graph. So usually because doing it graphically is faster than going through this. So on a quiz, you could expect to have to do this where they give you a graph and then you have to use the graph to determine whether it's even or odd. So you have to use those tricks. But it's good to know how to do this with other functions as well, just to practice the, the rules basically here. So we've got a square root function here. Uh, we've got 81 minus and then X plus two squared. So just to reiterate our rules, and we have the function r. So if our function r is the same, if I plug in a negative x, it's even. And if I have to multiply that by a negative, then it's odd. So when I look at this, usually if it's something with like a square root and other things going on, I'm like, I don't even know if this is going to be even or odd. I'll just let the math figure it out <laughs> because it's, it's tricky. It's You've got a lot of things going on here. And it's kind of like, well, I don't know how things are going to cancel out algebraically. So we are going to start by plugging in this negative X and we will just see what happens. We're sort of exploring what happens with the math. So I've got my square root. I've got my 81 minus, and then I've got this X, which is now a negative X plus two squared. So now looking at this, it's like, well, this clearly right now, it's not going to be, it's not the same thing as what we started with. It's almost the same, but I've got this negative X thing, but we, you need to do some manipulations to try to make it look the same. And so we usually try to make the X parts looking the same. We want to kind of turn that negative X plus two into an X plus two, if possible, if possible. This is where going through, going to, here we go. You're going to need this. So now we've got, we've got an even exponent. We've got something that looks like this right here. So when you try to simplify that, it simplifies to x minus a. So if you have x plus a negative x plus two, it's going to become x minus two when you try to simplify that. So 
basically the signs are kind of getting reversed. And I'm going to explain to you why that happens. I'll show that step. Oops, there we go. So when you are attempting to simplify something like this, your first thought is I wanna have a positive X, not a negative X. So let's factor out a negative one. And when you do that, those signs change. So now you've got something that looks like this, really messy. So inside the square, you now have a negative one times X minus two, because you're trying to get a positive X there. Well, that negative one, because we've got two things that are multiplied together here, that exponent applies to both things that are multiplied. That's our rules of exponents. So that is equal to saying I have negative one squared times X minus two squared. And so negative one squared is a positive one. And so this ends up that we have 81 minus, and then we have an X minus two squared because that negative one squared basically disappears. So that negative X plus two to the even exponent now became an X minus two to the even exponent. And so that's what I have highlighted here, how that simplifies. So you have this written down so you don't have to go through those steps, that you just know this is how it will simplify with an even exponent. So we're trying to decide, are we going to get the same function back? Okay, you got lost when the two changed to the negative. So what I did is I factored out a negative one. So that meant that I'm dividing everything, all the signs of the negative X plus two. And let me actually write that in blue here. So if you have a negative X plus two, and if I wanna factor out a negative one from there, I am dividing each of these by that negative one in order to do so. So a negative X divided by negative one, those negatives cancel and you're left with X. And then that two divided by negative one becomes a minus two. And that's why it became X minus two when I factored out that negative one. Is factoring out a negative one basically is changing the signs. It kind of flip flops those signs there. Oh, don't uh, don't apologize. <laughs> this is this is tough stuff, <laughs> and this is why I was giving you guys the shortcut so that way you can just use that shortcut or that little little trick next time, and you just have to know that it works. <laughs> so. We've got something that almost looks like what we started with, but we've got this X plus two. And you're like, well, okay, is there any way to change that? Or we've got this X minus two. Is there any way to change it to a plus two? If you tried, you would have to maybe try to, it would just change the X to the wrong sign. You're going to get into, as you try to get the X to the right sign, the two will be the wrong sign. As you try to get the two to the right sign, the X will go to the wrong sign. You're going to be in this loop and you're never going to be able to get to your original thing. So we can see that it does not match. So this is not even because it just it just does not match. We can't make it match. You can try. It's just not going to work. And part of this is like that square root is kind of messing with things. Now, if you're checking to see if something is odd, you're multiplying it by negative one. So you're just putting that negative in front of what you just did. Now, the problem with that is that, okay, yeah, I've got this negative, but it's outside of the square root of what I just did. And that's, I mean, the negative is not gonna go back inside the square root. It doesn't multiply in there. So it's still not the same thing. Because all I did was just add a negative in front by multiplying it by negative one, but it's still not a match to the original function because we've got that problem in the middle. And so the even part didn't work. The odd part didn't work. And so that means that this is neither, neither even nor odd. Because we can't make it work. 
It's just the math is just, and this happens. Part of what messed it up is that that plus two that we had. I said sometimes those having those constants in there messes it up. If it wasn't a plus two, if it was just minus x squared, this would have been an even function. But because of that plus two inside there, it messed up that exponent of two and it made it neither even nor odd because there's no way mathematically to make them, to get it back to the original function. And these are really tough when you're still learning algebra. It's really tough for you to know that that is the case. So it's just certain things that you kind of look, look for. And of course, a problem like this is not something that we're going to give you you know, on a quiz, because this is one of the harder ones to determine. Usually if you have something about whether it's, if you're given a neither, you're gonna be given one with a positive or an even exponent and an odd exponent. You're not gonna have like square roots and stuff like that. But I wanted to go through this to kind of show you what happens as you try to do something and it doesn't work. Okay. Um, one last thing that I, I would just recommend that, you know, as you're doing these and you're doing these algebraically is go ahead and graph them. So let me, let me graph one of these. I know that it's, it's eight o'clock, but I think this might kind of help too to check your work. So I'm bringing up Desmos here in the graphing calculator. So here's a way that you can kind of check your math here and check, is this indeed an even function? So let's put in our P of X here. And I put in my equation, negative absolute value of X plus 12 X to the 10th plus five. So what makes something an even function is that it's a mirror image across the vertical here. So you can see that it is a mirror image. To also check whether it's even, you can then say, okay, well, what is P negative X? And if that shows up right on top of your original function, that means it's even. So, you know, I have my original function P of X in red. And when I graph P of negative X, it's right on top of it. So that's telling me that this rule where I'm checking that it's even you know, we, we, we mathematically, algebraically determine this was even. The graph is also verifying that, that this is even right here because it's right on top of our original function. They're the same. So let me look at the uh, one that we had that was odd. So this one came out to be odd. So we have M of X equals negative four X to the fifth. Oops, I wrote the wrong exponent there. It's 2x cubed plus x. So determining that these things are odd are very difficult to just see visually just by the original graph. It's kind of hard to tell that it's a it's an odd function. But we can check, well, first check to see if it's even. So you plug in negative x. So when I check to see if it's even, the purple is definitely not the same as the green graph, they're not on top of each other. So that tells you, okay, this is not even because I didn't get the same graph out. Odd just means putting a negative in front of there. And so you can see just adding that negative, put this on top of our original graph, which is why it's an odd function. Plugging in that negative and then putting that negative, it kind of, it puts it back at the original where you started with. So let's go back to this weird square root one that's neither. So R of x equals 81 minus x plus two squared. So it's, um, it's just kind of, so it forms half a circle, but it's, not centered at the origin, which is part of our problem, as it's not centered on one of the axes, and that usually causes issues. So when we check to see if it was even, we plug in negative x. So that's the red. And you can see, okay, when I plug in negative x, it's not the same graph that we had. It's not on top of the black. 
an odd, you then put a negative in front. Well, if I plug in that negative in front, it just it's still not on top of our original function. And that's why this is neither, because doing those two things still doesn't get us back to the original function. And part of that, uh, when you're looking at it, what makes it neither is just, if it's not kind of centered along near the origin, it doesn't really look like it's centered on, you know, the middle here that tends to cause problems and mean that it's neither even nor odd. So you can use Desmos to visually check what you determined algebraically. And that's the wonderful thing about this function notation is that it's really nice when you're checking and you're using Desmos is you can just literally type in the rule that we're checking and then it will do it for you. And so this is another thing that you can do on a quiz if you're running out of time, um, you know, maybe pull up Desmos and then type it in and do it that way. So just, you know, if you're a visual learner, this might help you to, to determine these rules. Why do these rules work? And to kind of see, okay, that's what that means. All righty. Well, that's all I've got for you guys. Hopefully, um, this kind of helps you with those even odd stuff. I'm pretty sure there is one question on this week's quiz. Let me check. My other notebook here. I've got all the, the quiz questions written, just kind of worked out here. So I just want to verify because I'm pretty sure there is one. Week five. Yes, question seven. Uh, and question six is symmetry, which is related. And both of those are using the equations thing. So like I said, on a quiz, you're not gonna get one. If you have to do it by the equation, you're not gonna get like a square root thing. You'll get ones with just like exponents, but you will have, um, you will need to determine if it's even or odd on the quiz and so understanding this or at least if you you know it is question seven so if you're getting close to the end and you're kind of running out of time now you know how to do it you know on a with desmos to kind of save you some time mm -hmm. so um yep the uh the syntax for the graph for uh pgf plots is completely different than the syntax of regular law tech with math mode so my, <laughs> uh, my graph is a little sad it's a little off yeah, your graph's not quite there. <laughs> it's missing some stuff. Missing some parts. Yeah. All right. Well, I will let you guys get back to your Sunday night, whatever you are doing. That's probably going to be a break from math. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just as a heads up, um, this week is probably going to be one of your harder weeks, and next week is going to be harder. But then once you get to week seven, it's going to be downhill. So mm. if you're struggling with this week, don't feel bad. This is one of the harder weeks this week and next week, but it really will be easier for week seven and eight. I promise mm. you, everybody tells me that. So if the students are saying that, that's, that's, that's the truth. You know, <laughs> it's not just me. <laughs> so you can make it, you can make it through it. As long as you turn in the work, you know, if you've got missing work, I do accept late work. As long as you, you turn it in, you'll pass, you know, we <laughs> don't worry. I, I know motivation tends to around week five, like people start to get tired, but don't give up. <laughs> you can do this. So. All right. Well, I will talk to you guys later.